Diego is a hero. You know, it's actually his birthday today, so how about if we celebrate him? I'll be celebrating him in a different way, but he doesn't know anything about it, so shh. Can this channel do a meme review, please? Why on earth would I remove that glory from PewDiePie? Let's have a shot every time Jaime says, my God, my God, you're gonna get really drunk. Jaime's the type of guy who has a t-shirt for every occasion. That pretty much describes me. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Pocket Now Daily Recap, your comments for this week. So on Monday, the topic was that, uh, well, we learned why Samsung was killing the headphone jack. We learned that it had to do with uh, improvements in battery capacity, this and that. And uh, obviously I asked you, what do you think? Do you think that that warrants the death of the headphone jack? We had 1116 comments. Thanks a lot, guys. If you can fit an S Pen, you can definitely fit a headphone jack. Agreed. And you know what? It doesn't really have to be at the bottom. It could also be at the top. I know that that's a weird effect. Uh, I hate phones that do that, but I'd rather that over none. They're removing it to sell their wireless earbuds. Cough, cough, Apple Jr. The difference is that the Galaxy Buds are actually great, and they're not as expensive as AirPods. So, again, if Samsung would be like, you know what, we'll add this to the bundle, or if they would be like, you know what, $50 more and we'll give you the Galaxy Buds, I'm down. I would totally do it. Most companies are moving the headphone jack. Meanwhile, Asus puts two of them on one phone, also a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, also two USB-C ports, I presume, because the previous ROG phone had them, which is insane, but it's awesome and it's great, and uh, yeah. So, from Note 9 to 10 would be a downgrade. Lower resolution screen, lower battery capacity, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, no micro SD card slot. Uh, not entirely. And uh, it depends on what you call a downgrade. I can't remember the last time that I used the micro SD card. Uh, and I feel that phones perform a lot better. Like, currently I'm doing a Google Photos backup of my old photos and I'm using a Galaxy S10 for it. And man, that memory card has made the phone so slow. So. I do understand why companies are moving away from it, and so long as we get good enough storage and we don't have to pay much money for it, I'm down. Then on Tuesday, we've got more rumors of the Galaxy Note 10. Now that the centered punch hole apparently on the larger variant is gonna be a larger punch hole with a secondary camera there, and we're trying to guess what it is. We're hoping that it's not just the you know depth sensor. We're hoping that we're actually getting a wide angle or something. I asked you, what did you think? We had 468 comments. That punch hole will be the punchline. Uh, pun intended indeed. I don't know. I Listen, I've learned to live with it. I'm fine with it on the Galaxy S10 Plus. It's not that I prefer it. Uh, but still, I mean, if they provide me the functionality of a wide-angle selfie camera, I'm down. The bigger cutout will stick out like a sore thumb. So with that type of a cutout on the Note 10 Plus, it's better for it to be at the side instead of the center. That is a good point. I Aesthetically, I don't know which looks better. I don't find it to be better on the Galaxy S10 Plus. Uh, so I'm willing to see what they've got. Wide angle selfie, why is that so hard OEMs? Seriously, I think that all selfie cameras should be wide angle. I mean, you really, well, particularly people prefer to look thinner <laughs> and therefore a wide angle camera is what you need. So that solves one problem and then you've got the advantage that you don't need a selfie stick to add people to the photo. It's so many things, so why not just the wide angle lens? This is a wide angle lens actually. I don't like centered punch holes, large or small. It's much more obvious and therefore more intrusive. It becomes as bad as a notch. It becomes as bad, well, it becomes bad. I don't think as bad as a notch because a notch takes up more of the display. That's just me though. Then on Wednesday, Evan Blast chipped in. He brought some information on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Apparently, we're getting a Snapdragon 855 Plus. Apparently, we're getting some of the things that rumors claimed that we weren't. I asked you what you thought. We had almost 600 comments, 585 to be exact. No one will notice the difference in performance between the 855 and the 855 Plus, but the inclusion of the headphone jack will. You know, it's not that I feel that you won't. These are most likely improvements that we'll see in the 865 in addition to other things. And so therefore, I feel that there, if there's a newer chip and this phone is launching pretty much in the second half of a year, the best thing for this phone to be future-proof is to include the latest and greatest technology, not to include a chip that was announced in December. This is what my opinion is. This is my experience and everything. The thing about it is the amount of changes that happened between the 
S10 Plus and the Note 9 were so significant. If you watch my After the Buzz, I don't really care about the Note 9 anymore, and I don't want that effect whenever the Galaxy S11 launches. Both Notes need the 855 Plus as the Note means Pro. Without the headphone jack, it should pack at least a 5000 mAh battery, as ASUS is doing 6000 on the ASUS ROG Phone 2. Thing about it is that phone doesn't include an S Pen in the compartment plus the water resistance. I understand you, Samsung. I get it. Hopefully you do some improvements in battery performance, which you actually did on the Note 9 to a certain degree. Uh, therefore, people would not complain about whatever size battery you provide, but we'll see. We haven't really noticed any day-to-day -day speed increases from processing power since the 835. I don't think the 855 Plus is a deal breaker, to be honest. Um, have you used the Galaxy Note 8 by any chance or an S9? Uh, One UI helped a lot. It did but improvements in battery performance are significant, like significant between one and the other. So I, I wouldn't compare with the 835, dude. The Note should be a powerhouse and rock the newest technology. Exactly. It's supposed to be this Vanguard phone that has everything, and that's the reason why the company is charging you so much money. And because I feel that Samsung and Qualcomm have such a close partnership, I mean, what is the excuse? I'd rather even wait a little longer. If, if I had to wait an extra month for the Note 10, I wouldn't mind so long as I get the latest and greatest chip. That's just me. And then on Thursday, the Galaxy Fold finally made an appearance again. Samsung came on record. They provided official information over the improvements that we're getting in the Fold and when you can expect it, which is September, even though they didn't provide a specific date. I asked you if you would still buy the Galaxy Fold after all this. We had 371 comments. Samsung, buy the Galaxy Fold. My wife, Fold your wallet in your pocket now. Oh my God, 195 likes, dude. You deserve them. Those are the best puns ever. Uh, you know, for that amount of money, what can I say? So technically it's a 1.5 generation product. Technically it is, uh, and I'm glad they provided all these changes. I mean, for the amount of money that you're paying for it, you shouldn't be getting any issues with the product, at least not like this. So uh, yeah, that's coming. Let's not give in to our urges and get the Galaxy Fold yet. Let the reviewers find the folds and see if it's really ready. <laughs> oh yeah, you bet that that's one of the things that we're waiting for. Let's just see if it actually delivers. What will be released first, the Galaxy Fold or the Aliens from Area 51? You know, it's a good question, but at least we have a specific date for the Aliens. And then finally, on Friday, yesterday, we were like, whoa, you can already reserve your Galaxy Note 10? There was a reservation website. It's funny because the company's not really providing any details over what variants you can get. You could just reserve it with your email, which is pretty much just get notified over when the phone is ready, I guess. Uh, but they're saying that this is a way to help demand and this and that. And uh, well, the question is, uh, would you do it? We had 378 comments. Done, already done. I'm confused as to why I couldn't pick the variant, but it's done. Exactly, it's kind of weird. Uh, it looks more like a publicity stunt to a certain degree, but I also understand that the company wants to prepare its inventory, so it makes a lot of sense. We'll see about that. I never pre-order. Any company can mess up or have something which is specifically a deal breaker to me or something like the Note 7. You know what the beauty of the United States is? That you can return the product if you don't like it after 14 days. So uh, I don't, I love doing pre-orders particularly because some products just go sold out like crazy. So, you know, you get, you get your product on day one. If something goes wrong, you can always go back. I do, disclaimer, I do always get extended warranties on products that I buy, mainly because, you know, you can break them or stuff like that, and therefore you have the advantage that you can do this a year later and still be fine. Again, these are the things that I do. So reserving the Note 10 gives me a $50 gift card. Thanks for the free 45 watt charger. Thanks, Samsung. I guess, we don't know exactly what the price is going to be, if it's gonna be included in the box or not. Uh, but if not that, you could probably get something else like a very expensive Samsung case because they usually are. That's it for the Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you so much for watching. If you want your comments to be featured, keep them short, stick to the point, and try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. Also, follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram, and follow me on my personal handles in case you want to see me do some weird things with phones. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.